Hey everyone and welcome to another All About RVs video. Today we're going to take a look at a brand new 2022 No Boundaries 10.6 Overland style trailer. We're going to take a minute, kind of walk you around the inside and outside here real quick, show you what it's all about. So starting up here in the front section, you have a optional power tongue jack with a built-in light, or you could do manual, standard, whichever you prefer. Two inch hitch ball, does have the little uh, pet friendly leash latch down below. There's a propane line plug-in right here. So you could plug in your little two burner stove you'll see here in just a second. Single 20 pound propane tank on the front under that cover. The unit comes with zero batteries from the RV manufacturer. When you buy from Couches RV Nation, they do provide you with one deep cycle battery. There's room for two, depending on the size of the batteries you decide to go with. Little lower diamond plate metal on the front. Fiberglass exterior. It is Asdale composite sidewalls, foam block insulation on your sidewalls. Uh, but that Asdale, nice upgraded feature on the RV that basically attaches fiberglass to a man-made composite material instead of wood lou on board. So it is much less likely to have any type of delamination issues from water. You have a pull-out tray here, which does have your two burner stove on here. It is a propane stove. There's a little bottle uh, opener right there. You have a little bit of storage down below. The Truma 12 volt cooler slash refrigerator um, it does also work off of 120 volt electric as well. You can kind of see back up inside there, your water pump with the winterizing kit is back there. And there's actually an access panel from the closet to reach down and get that for winterization purposes. You have your monitor panel for your portable fresh water tank, the water pump switch in here, a light switch, electric outlet switch, 12 volt switch, obviously you can see the light. And then there's also a 12 volt switch for the heat pad to go on the fresh water tank if you do the cold weather package. You have a little dump sink right here. So if you are doing a little cooking, you can prep put your little water in here, got a little cold water sprayer faucet here. You do have a porch light out here, which is currently in clear mode, but you flip the switch, switch the opposite direction and you get the uh, amber mode. Little removable uh, hardware bag here so you can put some of your cooking utensils and stuff like that in there. A Little bit of shelf space as well. You do have the off-road tires you have aluminum wheels, electric drum brakes, five lug, easy lube hubs. This is on a torsion flex axle. You can somewhat see it underneath there, which gives it a more independent suspension. And they are currently using the Goodyear Wrangler tires. Have enclosed underbelly down there as well. Now this one was also ordered with the Batwing awning. This swings out and around covering a good portion of the side and rear of the RV. Now you will notice that the Batwing awning does not really go over the stove part. And that is in part because you have all that heat and smoke and stuff that can go up into your tent material and possibly damage it. Now, if you really truly wanted to, you could slide the bracket a little more forward, you can see how it kind of attaches on there. If you wanted to try and slide it forward a few more inches, gain a little bit more room up here, depending on how you want to adjust it, you could kind of bring it forward or back a little bit, which will also affect how it swings around back here. But I wouldn't get too crazy with it. Again, that smoke and heat and stuff could damage it. You do have a door on each side to get you in and out. It has a screen door, has a window in it as well. And it actually comes down pretty much flush with the floor. So you don't have that knee breaker, or shin breaker getting in and out of there like it did when it first came out years ago. Scissor jacks on all four corners to stabilize it, heavy duty jacks. There's solar prep here on the side for a portable solar panel and electric outlet out here as well.
can see the ramp door comes right on down. This one was again ordered with the screen feature and that basically, you know, kind of nice, helps keep the bugs and stuff out at night. If it's a cool night and you want to leave this down. Going on up in here, this was also ordered with the TV option. That is a 12 volt TV and it's on a swing arm so you can move it around. There's storage back in behind there as well. You can kind of see a little bit there. Your closet area here, that lower part is an access panel to get to your water system. Electric box with your breakers and fuses, USB charger ports, and an electric outlet here. The dinette seat there you can see actually flips down and makes into your queen mattress as well. And this again was ordered with the uh, little flip up tables, little cup holders. And when you do that, you also get the little storage compartment here, which is only about probably three inches deep, but it gives you a little extra place to stash some stuff. You have tie downs in your floor, so you could tie down a small motorcycle or four wheeler. Pretty cool little setup. Now this was also ordered with the AC feature. I forgot to mention when we were in here. But you can see right there, air coming down through the ceiling. 13.5 BTU AC, keep you plenty cold on a hot day inside there. You do have a little side vent here, so if you do have a four-wheeler or something in there, you pop the little vent open there and you have another one up there so that fumes and stuff can kind of flow out of there. Detachable power cord. This is 30 amp electric service and it's probably close to, I'd say 25 or 30 feet long roughly. You do have the WineGuard 360 antenna up top here. You can kind of see what that AC looks like. This was ordered with the Nobo Nest, so you're kind of seeing the cover. I didn't make it look all pretty, but I just kind of rolled it off of there so you could get the tent open and kind of show you what the tent looks like here. Pretty cool little feature if you want the Nobo Nest tent. Folds up and down right onto the Rhino Rack system up there. Uh, basically allowing you to bring a couple extra people with you here or even for yourself to sleep up there if it's a nice night. The adjustable aluminum ladder here. Got your little shoe bags or you know dirty gear bags, whatever you want to throw in here so you don't get it all up into your tent area here. There are little skylight in the roof here. There is another one back in the top part and you got some side and back screens as well. Little mattress here to try to make it a little more comfortable for you. Spare tire. You got your freshwater gravity tank fill right here freshwater tank drain down below. There are city water hookups here, cable satellite inlets here. Then you're going to have some important informational stickers here. I'm going to pop those up for you as well real quick. The first one popping up is your main data sticker. It has production date, VIN number, axle size on it. But most importantly here you have gross vehicle weight. It's the most you can load the RV up to, axle weight, hitch weight, everything combined. Do not exceed that number. Next is your unloaded vehicle weight, which basically has the weight the RV weighed when it rolled off the factory assembly line. Next, cargo carrying capacity sticker telling you how much gear you can load into the RV before you exceed that gross vehicle weight that was on that first sticker. And last but not least, tire sticker here. Basically telling you tire size, but most importantly, tire pressure. Do not exceed or do not let the pressure drop too low so that the RV can hold the weight of whatever you got going on in there properly. Basically, the tire can only hold a certain amount of weight at a certain pressure. If you let it drop too low, the tire could blow out a lot easier. 
So make sure you maintain your lug nut torque, your tire pressure, very important items. And down below here is a battery disconnect as well. And you also have your seven way Bargman wiring plug, which runs your running lights, uh, you know, turn signals, all that type of stuff. Your truck, if you wire it properly, should have a 12 volt feed. And also again, brake controller to control the brakes. 12 volt feed will charge your battery while you're driving down the road as well. Or if your battery were to die, you could plug it into your truck if that feed's working properly still use your power tongue jack or you know again charge that battery back up while you're traveling all right guys thanks for doing the quick tour here with me on the no boundaries 10.6 model here really do appreciate it check out the guys at couchesrvnation.com one of the largest internet discount dealers in the country